end of the day, I'm not really feeling that. I'm trying That's to give heavy. all my energy, all my love to one person so I can grow with somebody and then like I can be myself. Mm. You can't be yourself with somebody until you give your all to them, you feel me? Mm. And I feel like if I give you the bad, the good, the in-between, and we rocking, why not? Mm. You feel me? We've been together a year and seven months before we even got engaged. Some people don't make it a week in a relationship. Some, people, some people don't make it three months. Thanks, brother. So the way these relationships are nowadays, bro, if you got somebody for a year and a half, why the not? I just want to say congratulations. Come on now. Um, been following you for a little bit now. And I remember when you spoke the J. Cole shit up. Come on now. Come, Come on, on now. Man. Talk your shit. I, look, I saw when you spoke it up. And then you wasn't just on any J. Cole song. Facts. You was on one of the ones. Come on now. My, My life, life, right? It's all I have. Come on, Come man. Come on now. We congratulations, outside. man. Oh, yeah. That shit smoke as fuck, bro. What is, is that it? for you? What the fuck? Like, is that for you? I'm not even a drinker that big hey, without it. Easy. Don't play with me. Is that God for you? God damn. I, I, I drink. We gonna have fun. Say that, say that, say that. Um, Moray is in the building. Come on now. I mean, one of the dudes that really came up from the bottom. Yes, sir. From the hood. Come on. Fayetteville. Now. Yes, North sir. Carolina. North Carolina. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. This guy I've been putting in work. He's still here. Yes, sir. And it's an honor to sit next to you, dog. Bro, you too. Come on, black man, a black right. man, baby. And we had some great conversation off camera. Now I ain't gonna lie, we was getting it that tough. shit was intellectual. Yo, he what he call? He called me. What he say? That's a weird nigga shit. <laughs> First ten minutes, I noticed, man. He called me a weirdo. Nah, nigga. listen. He nah, called me a weirdo. It wasn't. See, it, it's it's the it's, it's the whole range of that thinking is weird. Uh huh. That's Tell the people we talk about. Fuck it. We was talking about actually. No, no, no. You start us off. Okay. Cause this your show. Fuck it. What's so, up? We talking about um, mistakes versus. Regrets, regrets, mm -hmm. and intentional. If, if if you did things on purpose, on purpose. and right. if you did it on purpose, was it a mistake? Right. If it was intentional, was it a mistake? Oh, and I owe you an apology. I gave one. I gave it to you off camera. Yeah, you did. You did. You did. We saw it. We saw it. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? So what Murray was saying was, you can um, you can make a mistake intentionally. I guess you, you can do something and it be a mistake. Right. If it's like your first time. Right. Nobody's perfect. We're not expecting you to be. But if you do something, it right. is a mistake. But a pattern is not a mistake. Fast. So we talking about cheating. Thank yes. You, we talking about cheating. If y'all listen, I'm very transparent on my podcast. Now, all, my, my boy ran a couple blocks. He fast as hell. A, a got he, he got here in Uber time. A I'm few. talking about boy hit the Uber on that nigga. Because I ain't going to catch the Uber because oh, the Uber okay. traffic. I'm like, nah. Hey, those, and the Gucci's, though. Hey. For you, dog. Come hey, on, I, dog. I hate being unprofessional, and I was like, man, we already, this is bad. So, nah, boy, the turbo with the Gucci, that's, that's too hard, that's too hard. I, I own my mistakes on camera, off Gangsta. camera, all that. So, Gangsta. So we talking about cheating, uh -huh. and I was like, yo, I feel like cheating is intentional. That's not a mistake. I feel like it's a choice. And he like, you can make a choice and still be regretful or... or It'd be a mistake. A mistake. And I'm like, I don't regret nothing I did for real. Because, you know, we always say, everything I did made me who I am today, all that. So that's how I'm thinking. So we looked up, what we look up, Seven? Can a mistake be regretful? And it literally said, can a regret be a mistake? And it literally said, a regret is, is a mistake. mistake. <laughs> In the definition. In the definition. So you I was like, me? you know. But it, 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 we both were correct. Because depending on how you view your life, you feel me? Like, For sure. If you somebody to say, I own my shit, therefore I don't see it as a mistake, as a learning lesson, that's, For sure. that's, that's your personal views. But it's a mistake if you say it's a mistake. Yo, yeah. since we there, man, um, let's get straight to it. Let's get it. You got your uh, fiance here with uh -huh, you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, I feel like you had a situation, right? Like, you was yeah. married for a long time. Yeah. First, first let, let me set, set the record straight. Set the record straight. A nigga is divorced mm. and have been been separated for a long ass time before I got divorced. Okay. This is who's in my life now. Mm -hmm. And I hate talking about my ex in front of my girl because that's so disrespectful to me. I don't want, like, her feeling that way. That's hard. Is it cool? She cool? I'm going to say this. It's over. That's hard. I have I have someone new that I love that love me. We work well together. There is no ex. For sure. It's only a now. <laughs> so I like that, but even me, I don't talk about I don't like to talk about past per se. Yeah. I like to talk about the person and what they learn and grew. Yes. You, right? Yeah. So it's not it's it's, it's less about the person mm -hmm. and more about you. Yes, sir. I only brought that up because I feel like 
Before that, you was married again? I, I've been married twice. Twice, yeah. Right? And the one thing I noticed about you is like, especially somebody coming from the streets, for the like only time you hear somebody like being married that many times a day was like in the military or something. Yeah. But you really got, you engaged a couple times and married yeah. because of it's a choice that you made. Yeah. Why is, why is marriage so big for you? I'm from the South, you feel me? So for me, it's like, if you love somebody, put a ring on it. Mm. That's my thing. That's how I can say, you know what? As a man, I feel like you are the one that I think is for me forever. Mm. Whether it is or it's not, at that moment, at that time, I thought you were forever. Okay. And I want to let you know that I'm willing to be here for forever through whatever and give my all. And mm. as a man from the South, that's what we do. We get on the knee, we give the ring. That's crazy. I'm still wiping sweat. I'm really sweating. Nah, nah, you, you, you going crazy. I'm going crazy. Like, so, ain't, no, ain't no fan? No, nah, it ain't, man. I'm nah. thugging in here. Listen, nah, nah, you I'll be on camera. Gangsta. Listen, this is for you, dog. This Gangsta. is for you. <laughs> so, um, if you love him, is is just that, like, right? If you, if you, if you are, if you have the mindset that this person that you're with, you can see the foreseeable future, mm -hmm. and I mean 15, 20, not three, four. 15, 20, you can see yourself in the family. You can see yourself being there with them through whatever. And if you have been through with them through whatever, why not? Mm. Why waste your time being a boyfriend and girlfriend for 17 years? And you see that. That you makes no fucking sense. You think that's a Southern thing? To me, yes, because I'm okay. from the South. But it, it could be it could be a worldwide thing, whatever it is. But to me, where in my roots, where I'm raised, is from the came from the South. So was I, your parents married? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cause growing I was curious because being a street nigga, right? Yeah. A, a street dude. Mm -hmm. We so used to like seeing the music videos and yeah. we want all the chicks and things like that yeah. for you to choose that route. But cause a couple times yeah. it showed a lot about you and I was like, I thought that was dope and I thought yeah. that should be pointed out. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. No matter if it was in the past or not. So yeah. again, not talking about who it was, uh -huh. but more about you. Yeah. So you've never been like a player like just... I mean, when I was growing, of course, you did your, did your thing. But I ain't gonna lie, like I'm more, I'm more of a love type nigga. You feel me? Like mm. that's my vibe. Like I have a lot of love to give, and I ain't trying to love a lot of random motherfuckers. Because at the <laughs> end of the day, I'm not really feeling that. I'm trying that's to give heavy. all my energy, all my love to one person, so I can grow with somebody, and then like I can be myself. Mm. You can't be yourself with somebody until you give your all to them. You feel me? Damn. And I feel like if I give you the bad, the good, the in between, and we rocking, why not? Mm. You feel me? We've been together a year and seven months before we even got engaged. Some people don't make it a fucking week in a relationship. Some, people, some people don't make it three months. Thanks, brother. So the way these relationships are nowadays, bro, if you got somebody for a year and a half, why the fuck not? Why not? If you got somebody for two, three years, why the fuck not? You done got her pregnant or you, you've been fucking her off for your whole situation ship. God damn, my nigga, what's happening? I mean, talk to him. I'm just saying, it's, it's just... It's just Growth, you feel me? Like niggas don't fuck with marriage nowadays because it, it means oh yeah, I can't fuck no bitches. Yeah, but you get one, you get the fuck how you want to, when you want to, every fucking day if you like. Mm. Don't be weird. Mm. That's, I'm, I'm just saying. And I be on some man shit. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yep. I feel like being married, no, scratch that. Being committed mm -hmm. is more gangster, is more player. I swear. Than having multiple. I swear. I'm not trying to be a simp. I'm just being as a. I'm 31. You feel fuck, me? I, I'm so tired of the simp word. You a simp if you out here doing shit for bitches who ain't yours. Oof. That's my thing. I'm talking heavy. I'm no, sweating. I'm mad. If you got three, four, five, the clip. if you got three, four, five bitches and you buying them all Birkins and bags and you pay answering them in the first ring and they get to be at your crib, you a simp. Mm. Ain't nothing but just yours. They doing the same shit with every other nigga. Fact. But if I have one person that I can pour my all into, she gonna get it abundantly and she gonna pour it back into me. That's a relationship, good or bad. Whether y'all go through whatever y'all go through, relationships is hard as fuck, and that's what makes it worth it. When you're going through something with that one person, you're like, damn, I fucked up five, six, seven times. And this person says, you know what? I still believe in you. Mm. You don't get that from a random. They, they don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> like, so once the bag drop, once you stop paying for shit, bitch, it's on to another nigga. Thanks. That's just how it is. In a relationship, you have the opportunity to, to make mistakes mm. and to be forgiven and to grow and to humble yourself and to learn somebody else. I'm still learning mine, and I'm gonna learn it for the rest of my life. It's always gonna be something new. That's relationships, mm. upgrade, level up, and understand. So, and I didn't know that before, but now I do. You, but you had some experience, right? Uh -huh. Been married, been divorced, all yep. of that. If you had to give some advice to the young dude or the guy that's married right now, right? Uh -huh. What would your advice be? Advice would be no cat. If you if you are married and your shit is rocky, you mean? Whatever it, first comes to your mind. First thing, if your marriage is rocking and you a man and you feel like this is not for you, before you go crazy and, and leave and cheat, try everything in the book you can 
and then you can tell yourself and her we gave it everything. everything. There's nothing you can say we didn't try or mm. do. You cannot hate me. And if you do, I don't hate me because I tried everything. everything. The thing about a man is we tough, but we still have a conscience to the point where it's like, if you with somebody you don't want to be with, you like, I ain't going to leave this little mom because I fucking love this little girl. <laughs> but do you love you? Mm. Enough to say, look, shorty, I ain't happy for real. Like, I don't really <laughs> wow. want to be here. I, I think I think we should try this. And then if it don't work, let's lie. Yo, I feel like I'm in church because I keep I keep wiping my head. <laughs> he giving it real. Pass over Yo, he, he giving real service. And I'm like, it's hot. Yeah. Like, he he heard my cry. No, in fact, so no, damn, loving yourself is so important, bro. Yeah. That's, that's so crazy. I feel like a lot of times we do stay longer than we should. Yeah. And longer than our expi ex expiration date because we're trying to love somebody else more than we love ourselves. Yeah. But loving yourself is learning how no knowing when to walk away. Facts, not facts. Right, you feel me? Crazy. Damn. Now that's crazy right there too though. That's heavy. Like, and that that's some niggas don't know how to do. Females nobody know how to do that. Mm. Walk away at the right time. Cause sometimes mm. you walk away when you think it's the right time, it's wrong as shit. Mm. Cause they cause you got upset or something wasn't right. Bro, that's this shit that you can try. If you're not trying it, then you didn't give yourself a full try. So how do you know when you gave it your all? How do you know when there's nothing left? All right, so in, in, in my case, you talk to whoever you with. Mm -hmm. and you put it on the table how you feel, mm -hmm. what needs to change, what you don't like, and they do vice versa. Boom. You put what you want to try on the table. Each person say what, what they're lacking, what they're lacking, what they need, what they need. Mm -hmm. Find a middle ground. Try everything on the table. If you guys are still at ends at the end of the day, it may need to be over. Mm -hmm. And that's only if you've been together. I'm talking about, you can't just say, okay, we tried everything, it's been two weeks. That's not how it shit. Mean, two weeks kind of crazy. That's, that's, not crazy. How, crazy. that's not how it works. <laughs> Trying everything, it takes time. It takes time for you to understand, it takes time for her to understand, it takes time for y'all to understand each other and what's not working. And if mm. you don't understand what's not working, it's just not working. Damn. At the end of trying everything, you're still like, what the fuck is wrong? Like, if you can't say, you know what, I got an attitude problem. I need to work on that. Mm. You know what, I got anger issues. I need to work on that. You know what, I'm not as attractive to you as I used to be. Let's try to work on that. Hey, I'm not attractive to me. Let me work on that. That's shit that you can do in your relationship to build a better relationship. You wildin'. What's the name of your church, bro? Huh? You wildin'. What's Power, you Powerhouse Love and Faith? You wildin', Come right? On Come on now. We outside. You wildin' now, right now. I'm just learning. Like, bro, I don't care, bro. I'm taught things by a lot of people. Mm. And, and no disrespect to my girl, but I appreciate everything that all my exes gave me. Because mm. you made me better for the person I'm with now. Mm. You made me a little more patient, a little more understanding. I'm a little less controlling. I understand my flaws, and I'm trying to make them fucking better. Mm. Now, as a couple, I can't get a handle on, but you know we trying out there motherfucker, because right. niggas still hood niggas. But I'm saying, as long as you're trying, you're, you're 100%, bro. That's all that Bro, you can't even apologize. Like, don't even apologize. But I'll say that because they probably looking like, damn, I wish I would have got that one. I wish nah, I would have nah. got that more, right? Like, Yeah, and you not, you won't. <laughs> that like, shit is a dub. It's, <laughs> it's, <over>. it's gone. <laughs> it's, it's like you're not going to get that one. It's, <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> so let me ask you this then. Talking about love, right? If you had to choose mm -hmm. out of these three, love, loyalty, respect, what has to come first, then what falls in line next, and what's absolutely last? Um, I think loyalty comes first. Um, because a loyal person can learn to love you. And then with that love of being loyal to you will come that respect. Oh, wow. I don't believe people put respect first some like I, I don't i think loyalty is important because if i'm loyal to you i have to respect you mm. i have to love you because i'm here every fucking day mm. if i did if i wasn't loyal nigga, i can respect you from afar i don't gotta respect you and be next to you nigga. but mm. now nah, you, you fuck a boy he's smooth there's respect that's respect yeah thanks loyalty you fuck a boy that's my dog mm. rain sleet snow whatever it is that my dog loyalty. Heavy. and i love that nigga, and i respect that nigga. vice versa for your for your shit. same shit. Yeah, I didn't think he was gonna be this cool of a dude, bro. We was just, we was just at each other's heads and shit. We think more alike than we don't, cause it's crazy. Cause I used to say respect first. Yeah. Until recently, I started to say loyalty. No, I did too at first. Yeah. Come on now, I, I got older. And I say loyalty because I feel like loyalty is an action. Yes. Right. Like no matter what, if somebody hate me, no matter what, if you hate me, if you're loyal to me, it's still love there. It's still love. There is so much, so much BS going on in the world. If you, it's got to be something for you to be loyal to me in a room where I'm not at. Come on. It got to be. Respect is so subjective. It's like, 
I can respect you and not give a fuck about you. Fact. Respect I, you and rob you. I can res- I can re- Nigga, what? It's like, bro, oh, I ain't gonna lie. I respect, dude. He getting bread. I need that. I, yo, he getting money. I respect gangster. Listen, he leave at 10 o'clock. Let's go ahead and you feel me type shit. That's weird. I respect bro, I your just, money. <laughs> I just had to do it, bro. Don't take it personal. It's just business, bro. I had to, I had to do what I had to respect. do. I knew, I knew I knew you gonna come back. Respect, <laughs> but loyalty. I won't rob. There's no way in. <laughs> hey gangster, how 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 get money with you? Mm. Matter of fact, I, I don't want. How can I get you some more money? That part, <sighs> bro. How can I show you that I'm fucking with you and then we get money together? Oh my god. That's bro. I ain't gonna lie. That, that's not in this industry, and that's not in a lot of relationships. Mm. It's it's not a lot of give and take and none of that shit. And, I, and I'm learning that, bro. That give and take shit is the only thing that break relationships. Mm. It ain't even nothing. Attitudes don't. It ain't it. The the bullshit ain't it. If you could just give and take a little less, that's like, bro. If my girl get mad and I, and I choose to be like, what's wrong? I just gave you the right energy mm. and I didn't take my energy for granted and waste yours. And you wanna know what else? <laughs> I'm learning since we on this. Not to turn this into a relationship podcast, yeah. but like I'm learning that like even what's wrong, right? Yeah. Even a follow up of even if it's about me is like, damn, I understand. Yo, this episode is sponsored by the Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created the Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now listen. As an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money. And we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. That's Damn, hard. I could do better. But that's hard. That's hard. That, that, that's, hard. That's, the, that's the only thing I would say is <clears throat> once you ask what's wrong, you got to be prepared for the answer. Oof. And I like downstairs how you were talking sometimes and I was like talking over you. I had that. Mm. Not, I'm trying to get off out of that shit because sometimes I will miss some shit that I need to hear because I'm talking to. That's some, that's some, <laughs> that's some. Play. Hey, you want another drink? That's some yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, I, I think, I think it's this. Hey, I don't know what this is. Hey, it gotta be holy water because that bitch is spiritual. <laughs> I ain't gonna cap. <laughs> this spirit is spiritual. It should go with gangster. So let me ask you this then. Oh my god, I got more questions. I got let me ask you this. Come on, now we outside. So, so I had somebody say, "Love is hard." Uh-huh. She killed me. She fucked me up with this. Fact. She was like, I'd rather somebody like me than love me. Cause love is hard. She was like, bro, when I like somebody, that's the great that's a great nah. space to be in. Listen, brother. She she Get some, the, grab your shit. Grab your mic, bro, grab your mic, oh, grab your mic. Brother, she on to something. I, I would say this. Love without like is very hard. Mm. I can love you to the end of this earth, but can't stand your ass. Oh my God. That's hard. To like somebody, and it's not saying you gotta like the motherfuckers all the time, mm. because you won't. That, that, you can't name one person in this world that you like every day. But seven out of ten, <laughs> I still like you. That's what I'm saying. That's a good enough like for me. <laughs> That's a good enough like. <laughs> That's a good. You're not getting ten out of ten. Seven out of ten, we can cuddle five days a week, chill, and it's like once every now again you get a little fucking attitude. I can deal with that. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, real quick. Plug it up. Oh, sorry. Get the plug back. Get your plug back. <laughs> no, nah, fine. Get your plug back, please. Okay, nah, but if like is the hard part. Love mm. is not the hard part. Like, l- love is not the hard part. Love, I, I, I don't probably agree with love is easy mm. because I can give you my heart, but I have to like you to let you keep it. It's like, okay, I love you, and then it's like I don't even like you, and now my like is gone. Now I my feel love like, is gone. I feel like love may be the hard part only because it's so mm-hmm. fleeting. Like I feel like like is so I don't want to say temperamental, but it's mm-hmm. like it's like when you like somebody, it takes no effort. Like you meet somebody, I like this motherfucker. You want to hang with him all the time. When you love somebody, mm-hmm. it's a choice now. I think it's backwards mm. because I think love people love it's easy because you can say I love you to anybody. It's easy. Do you mean it though? But it's easy because you can tell yourself yeah, I love this person, but if you don't, you will not like them. 
Mm. You won't like that. You can say, I love the fuck out you. Hey, bro, whatever you need, nigga, I love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like you, so I don't mean it. Mm. But I'm going to say it. I'm here for you because I love you, bro. I don't like your ass. Mm. <laughs> I fuck with you. I tell you, hey, it's all love. How many niggas say, and take about love, bro? Mm. You don't love this nigga, bro. It's just something you say. Unless I tell my nigga, love you, bro. I sp love you, bro. Mm. My girl gets the I love you, though. My homie, love you, bro. I don't love. Love what? What you love? Don't tell me that shit. Love, bro. Mm. Hey, bro, peace. I just learned that shit. I just be like, what's up, gangster? Talking to my nigga Mikey, he be like, peace, bro. Oh, shit. Peace. What's peace. up, bro? It make you feel different. Yeah. And words are valuable. Like, I like my nigga. Like, I love for my nigga. I like my girl, and mm. I'm in love with my girl. Mm. I like my, my, my nigga Two Time. I like, I like my nigga Sean, and I love my niggas. Because mm. those are my dogs. Facts. That's how it is. I was talking to the dude, Seti Hendrix, right? Oh, he was, like, he was like, yo, I got to start telling girls I like them. I can't tell them I love them. I'm like, I ain't going to lie, bro. That shit might be deeper than love. Tell us, I like you? I like you? That got to be deeper life than love. you? That's controlling. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds manipulative. <laughs> I life you. Welcome to death row, bitch. Hey, yo. <laughs> I life you. That's, I feel like that's some that's some gangster shit. It's like gangster as hell. But imagine telling the girl and you've been with her three weeks. I life you. Oh, that's crazy. She gonna be like, what? That's what I was. I think it's. I think life, life is deeper I like, than love. I life you too, and you will never see her again. I think life is deeper, deeper than love. It, life is definitely deeper than love. If you tell me I life you, mm. we gotta already be married. Mm. <laughs> we gotta already be like here, because even in marriage, it's not your life. You don't understand. Divorce is real. So if I say I life you, mm. oh, that's that's, the, that's the death do his part, motherfucker. What L literally Fact. life? I might boom you because you're trying to leave. Type shit like it's going crazy. <laughs> this nigga crazy. Ah, I should say life you. That's shit crazy. <laughs> Yo, let me ask you, bro. Um, let's get to the music real quick. J. Cole was, that was something you always wanted. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, yeah. That was. Not just specifically J. Cole, but I always wanted somebody to fuck with me from that level. You know what I mean? Mm. But J. Cole was different because he from. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the fact that it was from J. Cole made it that much more like, what the fuck? Mm. I was expecting somebody else, maybe the baby somebody, but, but, but somebody who's from where I'm from. Like, yo, I'm going to reach back into the city. Like, bro, I'm fucking with you. I'm like, oh, mm. shit. Boy, I'm fucking with you. Who that? Who that? Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I almost said it on the first time FaceTime, nigga. I ain't going to lie. I'm going to start singing songs and shit, but I had to keep my cool because I'm a player. How, so walk me through it. <laughs> walk, walk me through it. So uh, How does that, man? All right, boom. I'm in the car. I'm in front of Fable State. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a college in Fayetteville. I got a phone call from my manager then. He like, uh, bro, I got your cool on the line. And I'm like, yeah. <clears throat> But I'm trying to keep my cool because I'm a player. So I'm like, oh, what's up, go? He like, oh, yeah, I wanna, you want to talk to me, do something? I'm like, yeah, hell, yeah, that's cool, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, everything just, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. All right, I'm going to holler at you. You have the phone, click. Was I on the phone, Jacob? Did I just, yeah, huh, the whole conversation? Magic coming back like, bro, you good? I'm like, nah, I just fucked up. I didn't even, I was so like, oh, shit. That it just was like I played it too cool, too player, and it was it wasn't player, it was a sucker. Cause I could have been a little more excited. I just was trying to be, I was trying to be no shit. dick eater, bro. I was like, shit. I was trying to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's I'm like, oh, that's crazy as fuck. That's crazy. But it, it, he showed me love to this day. He showed me love. So did you fly out there or? Uh, we flew. To, I flew to L. A. Like uh, my first time linking with J. Cole. I ain't gonna lie. We was talking. Uh, he flew me on the PJ to uh, L. A. I don't want to tell the story a lot. My bad, big bro. It came out. But uh, he flew me out to L.A. on the PJ. I ain't never been to PJ in my life. I ain't going to cap. That shit blew my motherfucking by. Like, he, <laughs> I'm walking with my nigga Omar. Uh, he he played basketball with Coach. Cool shit. We, we walk up to the plane. I'm just looking at this. So many planes. I'm like, this is not how I usually fly? Facts. He like, nah, nah. We're going to the back. We're going to the back. Ain't nobody going to check my bags? <laughs> bro, we're going to the back. <laughs> going to the back. All right, getting a little cart. I'm like, okay, that little cart. Nigga just bumping in a little cart, just you know, riding in the cart to sleep. I got my little headphones on. I ain't, I'm just chilling, you feel me? Nigga get to that big ass Lassie, Puma, Delta, just big ass jets. I'm like, okay, this is crazy. So uh, we go into the building to get checked. He said, nah, we getting this plane right here. 
And I was like, nobody told me we was getting on the PJ. You said I'm gonna fly to LA. We get on the PJ, bro. That motherfucker is badass. I'm talking about leather seats, fucking beds, bottles. They frying some shit. And they, it's Westland sizzling that bitch. Food is sizzling on the little stove. I'm like, what is happening here? Wait. He walk on the plane. I'm like, nah. Boy walked up with the messy dress, bro. I'm talking about. I said, this is really cold. That's and he was crazy. like, what's up, nigga? I'm like, and I ain't say nothing else. Pretty much, I just listen. Damn. The whole flight, he just was kicking hella knowledge. Kicking it. I'm just like, yeah. Damn. Damn. Tell a quick little story about my life. He go, yeah, give me some advice. I'm like, yeah. Damn. That shit sound good to you. You smart as a motherfucker. Like, I, I love intelligence, bro. Especially from another brother. You smart like that, bro. I love soaking it in, bro. And that PJ, that studio session, everything was amazing, bro. What was the um, most memorable piece of advice that he gave you? Uh, Basically... Don't be afraid <clears throat> to do small rooms. <clears throat> I think when I first started, I wasn't touring a lot. And he, like, he told recently, he was like, bro, what you need to do is start doing smaller rooms. You feel me? Fill that bitch up and get a personal relationship with your fans. Every show don't got to be a $50,000 because I, I didn't take it if it wasn't hella people outside. If it's not $20,000 or more, I'm like, all right, right, I stay in the crib. Mm. But he was like, nah, you got to get out there. Like fans who not at them 20,000 fucking people arenas still want to see you. Mm. And I'm taking that advice right now, and that's what the fuck I'm finna do. I'm finna push this shit to people that really want to see me, you feel me? Mm. That, that advice was something that somebody would tell you who knew you for a long time. We knew each other for like a year, you feel me? And he still gave me advice as if he knew me for 15 years. Mm. Don't even give a fuck. Like, bro, this is what it is. I'm going to give it to you the way it's supposed to be given to you, and you do what you please with it. Wow. And, and I appreciate that. That's deep. And I asked my nigga, bro. Is the know. baby from Fayetteville, too, or no? Uh, Charlotte. Charlotte. Okay, I thought so. Yeah, Charlotte. So it's the first thing, one of the first things I thought about when... um. When I was listening to you talk about him, was uh, bear with me. It was Detroit. So you think of Detroit, and mm -hmm. you know um, we got Big Sean, uh -huh. uh, Eminem, Four Two Dub. Right? No, no, not before that. Oh, before, though, that right? before that, yeah. So these were the breakout artists, yes. right? Of course, Royce the Five Nine. Uh -huh. But like the the main two that popped out was like uh, Eminem and then Big Sean. Uh -huh. Neither one of those guys were like representation of the streets. Yeah. So by the time when we got the representations of the streets, it opened the floodgates. Yeah. Did you ever, being from the streets, Yeah. how was it in Fairville looking at J. Cole being that star? Was it like, yeah, he's a star, but he doesn't represent where we come from? Because he always talked about college shit. He yeah. always talked about not being, you know what I'm saying, yeah. like understanding, understanding it, but not really being. Yeah. Two feet in it. Of course. Did y'all look at it like, man, yeah, he's Fairville, but he don't represent where we at. See, I can't speak for everybody. I can speak for Moray. Mm. As far as watching him do his thing, that is Fayetteville. College, mm. basketball, living your life, military, family. His life is a Fayetteville life. Like, that's like, it's just one of the Fayetteville lives. Mm. There's, there's so many people that can relate to him because he came from a military family. That's pretty much where I'm from, military mm. base. So if you say you can't relate to J. Cole and you're from where we're from, you can't do that. You understand you can't. Mm. It's just sometimes people feel away for hate. He didn't bring you with him or you didn't get a chance to be him. So you're going to hate. It's mm. okay, but you can't say he's not Fayetteville. Mm. I'm, so, I'm so sorry. He, he put shit in the city to help, like, batter. He bought buildings in the city to help batter women. Like, he really be putting shit. He ain't got to be in the city, but he put shit there to help the city. Mm. That's bigger than just fucking being there. Just walking around, taking pictures. Who gives a fuck about that? But if you can leave something, so when you leave, you're here, that's amazing. Mm. Dennis Smith Jr. is from Fayetteville. He made a whole basketball court. For the city, the, the the court he used was, bro, it was in a hood. I ain't talking about like my boy. I'm talking about like block nigga the wrong way, you getting shot. Like, mm. hey, fuck you, pussy boy. He made that shit better, mm. better courts, better rims, made people feel better. So now the shit is better. Vic Blends just built a court his hood. He from Hope Mills. It's like fucking twenty minutes. He just built a court too. Nigga, I'm next. That's mm. what I want to do. I want to leave some shit there. You can't say a nigga not from somewhere if he's showing love to where he's from. Mm. You can't do that, bro. You can't do that. Yeah. Now I just thought it was curious because I talked to a few Detroit niggas and um they was just saying like they they didn't really take nothing away from uh Big Sean, but they was like, Yeah, we we show love to Big Sean because he's from the D, but that just wasn't what we was that wasn't the part of the D we was from. That didn't that wasn't yeah. a representation of who we were. That's them. Mm. There's another representation that's just like Big Sean. That's buying his music. Right. <laughs> like that's that's the one like the ones who not of that life, you're supposed to feel that way. Mm. You don't you don't live like him. No, you are you not you didn't go to college or you didn't you don't have a grandmother that can like Big Sean had his grandmother to help him out and was in the military and they had money you didn't have that right so of course you can't relate 
But that don't mean you should discredit somebody or, or, or be like, oh, well, I don't really feel that shit. Like, bro, relax. Mm. He, he did his thing. He he made it. <laughs> he fucking. Nobody can say you ain't doing your thing. You fucking made it, nigga. I'm out here. Whether you like my podcast or not, bitch, I'm out here. Okay. <laughs> we outside. Nah, this for real. Crazy. We running down blocks and shit. Oh, mom, I was, we outside. We outside. <laughs> Nigga, oh God, nigga said. And this nigga waited for me. That's crazy. Like, that shit ain't never hey, happening. Nah, come on. Like, nigga nigga sat in a chair, waited. I mean, nah, nah, nah hey, listen. Real. It's, it's real recognized, real energy is energy. You feel me? So, like, nah, that's some real shit. So, yeah. quick sand drop. Yeah. Fairville was going crazy. Like, yeah. Did you understand when, when, that, when your single dropped, right? Yeah. Did you understand your power, what you had going on in that moment, looking back on it? Nah. I, I, I didn't know until I tried to shoot a video of my city. Uh, I shot trenches and in in, in where I'm from. And I was like, we're going to do a little video and see who can pop back out. So we just said, like, hey, more, more are you doing a video? Bring the kids, come hang out, bring the people, whatever it is. And I ended up... Trenches was you by yourself? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, with me by myself. Now with Polo. Uh, fucking everybody pulled up to this, like, the school called Westover. I'm talking about, bro, I ain't never seen so many people in my life. I'm like... They coming for me. Like, nigga made that one announcement on the newspaper. Like, more radio. And who reads the newspaper? Mm. Crazy. Like, motherfuckers read the goddamn whatever. Like, Fable Observer, I think it's called a Fable Observer, came to the park. 600, 700 people just off of. Damn. Shot a video. Gave the kids money. We had games. We had. I was able to do something for my city off the love. Mm. And that's one thing I love about my, about my, about my city. They love their kids. If I say bring the kids out, we're gonna do something nice, they know more we're gonna do something nice for the kids. Right. Whether it's book bag, whether it's Christmas presents, I do that shit myself. I knock on doors and hand shit out. Or I bring a building and we hand shit out. I love my city and, and I know J. Cole Doodoo. And we also So you you pretty close, <laughs> not saying pinpoint where, but you pretty you still pretty close to home. Yeah, of course. Why what what didn't why didn't you up and go somewhere far away? Uh I was I wasn't ready. Mm. That's that's all it was. Like I, I wasn't ready to be like, oh I gotta get me a house in LA. I wasn't ready for that. Mm. I'm, I'm still con- I was still content and I had to break out of my contentness mm. because just because I love where I'm from don't mean I gotta stay in the same house while I was in the hood that's weird right. <laughs> move on get a better lifestyle live better so your hood can see oh shit it's an opportunity and a possibility to be just like that mm. you don't get money and, and be who who you are and then stay in the gutter that's weird because now people won't say shit let's just stay in the gutter nah I want everybody in my hood to get the fuck out that's weird Get a better job. Go to school. Do something different. So you ain't got to do the same shit you were doing last year that's keeping you in the same spot you was in last year. No cap. No cap. <laughs> you feel me? I don't think nobody, if you got millions of dollars, you should be living in the same house before you got on. Mm. That's weird. No, facts. You don't believe in growth? Oh, I'm going to stay in the hood. I'm a real nigga. That don't make you a real nigga. Make you real stupid. You, you just, A real stupid nigga. You, facts. You just, you just told yourself you ain't worth the upgrade. Mm. <laughs> Who the fuck? <laughs> I'm worth every upgrade. That's weird. No, you fine. work for this shit. You on the stages. You on the studios. You deserve that shit. And that's what I'm telling myself. You had a um. You was close with Mo Three, right? I wasn't close with. I never met him in person. Okay. But I was a big fan. Right. For sure. When did When did you get put on with Mo Three? Uh, what song was it? It was. It's been a long time coming. Oh yeah. When that song came out, I was like, "What the fuck? How long? Paint the picture. How long?" Ago? From his death, mm-hmm. God rest of the dead, yeah, to yeah. Um, when you found out who I, he was. I want to say I was still working at Wendy's. It was like 2015 or 16. So this was years before you passed. Yeah, like I, 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 I was just a fan. I was, I was like, yo, I fuck with Mo three. Like, and the songs I started making, I was putting his name in, and I was like, bro, I had a chance to go to Texas. My first time going to Texas. And um, I did an interview with somebody. Uh, he was like, what do you think about Mo3? And I was like, Mo3, that's my dog. Like, start singing a song like I did now. That's my favorite fucking song. That's my guy. I, I, I love the way he, he sings and raps. It gave me my inspiration to do what the fuck I do. Mm. If anybody say you ain't pulled for Mo3, you probably weird. I don't even like you. But I pulled. You feel me? And I, I appreciate the inspiration. Mm. So when I got the call, like, hey, we heard you fuck with Mo3. You got a song. You want to do it? That's no question. Mm. Give me the song. Did the song, we shot the video in his hood with his homies, it, bro, it felt like I was close to him already. Mm. And it made me happy. Song got done, they're like, bro, what you wanna do with publishing? Give everything to his son. Mm. I feel like if he was here, he would put his son on anyways. So at least I could do, I didn't meet my favorite rapper, I gotta meet his son, that's close enough for me. Mm. So give him the bag. It's crazy because like, I was like the opposite end. I got introduced to him like maybe, not even a year before oh, he passed. Come outside? And that sh- shit, I'm like, 
damn, I was pissed because like you missed it. Yeah, I missed it. Like I, I, I when I when I got introduced to him, yeah, I'm like, yo, it's crazy. I'm gonna keep it easy. You know who? Same thing happened to me with uh, with Nip. Oh, bro, I was so hot when I didn't oh. hear it, when I didn't listen from before. I I, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't hear it until uh fucking the song with him and Roddy. Really? That's the first song I heard. I, I seen him in the movie with Ving Rhames. So I thought he was an actor. I didn't even know he was a rapper. I, all I seen was the movie. And I was like, oh, he's a good actor. I'll fuck with him, him and uh, Gilly Kid went crazy. You feel me? It's a hood movie. I like that shit. Then, then I heard the song. I'm like, oh, this nigga is crazy. Then I heard last time that I checked. It was five chains on my neck. I'm like, <laughs> what <laughs> is this? I'm like, this shit. Bro, and Yo. you, the whole victory lap to me was, was my, it was my introduction. And the rest, I get to dig up. It's like, damn, this is where he came from. So I'm going to be real, right? It's hard. Nipsey, so I was I was hearing Nipsey before victory lap. Mm-hmm. But no cap. I'm not saying this because he passed. I wasn't the biggest fan of his music. When I heard Victory Lap, yeah. it was like 10 steps ahead of like what I heard before. Like It was like a huge jump. Fact. I was like, damn, that's... Cr-. And I love when artists mm-hmm. do that. Like I love Fact. when I'm not like a, a big fan of the mm-hmm. music, and then they make a project kind of like... That's about to be a crazy take. Mm-hmm. It was the same way for me when I heard uh, Dirty Sprite 2. I, I wasn't the biggest like fan of like future music, but that Dirty was Sprite hard. 2 was that like... Was hard. Shout out to outside. I was like, <laughs> how did you do this? Yeah. How did you come from this? To this. That shit was like now, but that. see that that's my thing. I started with Victory Lap. Oh. So you geez. know, I was like, this is Yeah. Ha <laughs> I found it. Yeah. <laughs> crazy. Hot take, hot take. You probably gotta hear this before you just listen to the first second okay. of it. I think Nipsey, when I look at Nipsey and who and how impactful he was, uh-huh. I feel like he was too good for the earth, for this world. Damn. I feel like he didn't belong here. I ain't gonna I would I wouldn't say he didn't belong here. Because he definitely did, and he, he he did so much for a place that none of us live, mm. and we don't know how that shit is. Mm. And all you heard was he, the good he was doing in a place that we all think is hella dangerous. You feel me? Like Facts. that says a lot about a person who just want peace, who just want progress, who just want upgrade for his and everybody's life. Mm. That person definitely belongs here. I say that we need more people. Like I that. only say that because like. You know, I'm, I'm spiritual too. Like, I'm religious yeah, as well. Facts. And you know, they say, like, earth is really just hell on. It's just hell. Facts. Right? We're trying to make it back to, like, the promised mm-hmm. land, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and Nipsey was so special. Like, sometimes it's like, you know how they say, like, once you fulfill your purpose, it's time to go type thing? Yeah. His, like, his presence, I ain't never meet this man, but it just felt like his presence was so powerful that he fulfilled his purpose a couple times. It just felt like that, if, it, if that makes sense. It was like, when he passed, it, it, I, it almost, I didn't really like, it didn't hurt. If anything, it was like, damn. Yeah. I felt like he fulfilled his purpose. It was, it, it might sound weird, but it, it just like weird. that dude was, it, he was that special. And I, I never met the guy. But I ain't gonna lie, I never met him either, but I feel like he has so much more to do though. Mm. I don't feel like, I don't feel like his purpose was done at all. I feel like he was just getting started mm. and hating ass motherfuckers do what hating ass motherfuckers do. There's no way he, he just started. That's a good that point. album was his breakthrough to come back and give us another one, yeah. and then do more shit, and then do better shit. He w- it was time for him to become an icon. Mm. He- it was his legend time. But then he passed at thirty three. Then Jesus passed at thirty three. Come on. So I it's like like I ain't, a, I ain't a conspiracy theorist, bro. It's just like dude was special. I'm just I'm, last time that I checked, <clears throat> thirty three was the age that he rapped. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. It was but crazy. That's a crazy coincidence, though. I ain't gonna lie to you. That's crazy. Like, but I, again, I still don't think he was finished. Mm. I. I Bro, if you listen to Victory Lap, that didn't sound like it was over, bro. Nah, facts. Like, I, this is me becoming becoming a fan, like, new. Facts. He wasn't finished. Facts. That was, I just started an album. No cap. And I had plenty out before that, but I'm just starting. Facts. No Yo, cap. you ain't, when the last time you dropped officially? Uh, what, album or song? Yeah, song. I dropped uh, Durant, Broken Vows, and Letter to Myself, October, November, December. 2020. 2022. Two. Yeah. I'm about to drop a song with me and TJ on Friday. Okay, what, what, what was the wait? Like, what was the hold up? It was basically just trying to figure out what I wanted to tell. I've mm. been gone for a little bit, so I was like, I need to tell the story that I need to tell. The first couple songs are like letting myself, I want people to know my thought process. Mm. Of, of I, I wanted the money and I made mistakes and I fucked up and I'm trying to figure out how to love me and get back to me. Mm. Broken Vows is the story explaining how I fucked up. The rant to me was a end of the year freestyle where I just wanted people to understand this 
album is getting ready to be a little different than you think. I know you thought it's the little sad shit that, that dropped October and November, but December, I gave you bars because mm -hmm. you don't know what the fuck you'll get in my album. I want you to know I have so much to say mm. and so many ways to say it. By far, not a one-dimensional artist. Speaking of the art, the, the, <clears throat> the versatility in your, in your, your, your music, uh -huh. did you hear uh, a lot of comparisons of you and Mo3? Did you ever... Yeah, hell yeah. Did you hear that at one point? I, I, I hear that a lot. And I love that shit. You love it? I love that shit. It's crazy because I, I would think you would, that would probably be irritating. Because like a lot of people, when somebody try to compare people, or especially mm -hmm. be like, I don't know, let's say, yo, you a bite, like you you just biting on Mo3 or you just a knockoff Mo3 or something like Niggas, that. Niggas, I ain't never heard that. Mm. You can't say I'm a biter or a knockoff because I don't make the same music. Facts. But is it, we both a little chubby and melodic? Yeah, <laughs> I'll give you that. Yo, you probably and, top five storytellers, bro. <laughs> like top five, bro. You, <laughs> no, but that's just how anybody who's chubby and they do music, y'all think they sound alike or look alike or there's some similar. Whether it's the rest of Sean, T, Rail, Rod, Wave, Mo, Three, Mo, Ray, does not matter. We beat boys, and they remind me of each other. Shut but I feel like you, you're just a, that's a positive way of thinking because I feel like. A lot of times the conversations don't go like that when we talking about the people, mm -hmm. not the people that know, right? Yeah. I know better, but like the regular people you hear, the conversations just don't be like, "Oh man, I'm, they they sounded like it." Be yeah. more so of like, eh, they choose one or the other. Of course, it's always a choice, mm. and, and that's a part of the competition. I have to be the choice, so I got to do the work to be the choice. Oof. That's really all it is. That's heavy. You feel me? I don't. That's life, bro. Music is competitive. And when I drop this song on Friday, I drop my album, you gonna understand competition, please watch out. I'm stepping on toes and grabbing necks. I don't give a motherfuck. Mm. Love you. What um how like how are you enjoying your space now? Like the the space you talked about the energy a little bit. Mm -hmm. Niggas is fake, niggas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not a lot of very give and take. A lot of people mm -hmm. trying to take from you. Yeah. Manipulate situations. Mm -hmm. How are you enjoying the space right now? Right now, I'm, I'm in a good space. You know, mm. I'm in a good figuring figure it out space. Mm. And, and and that's why I like to be right now. Like, there's nothing wrong with trying to get your shit together. Mm. You know, and that's what I'm trying to do. Figure it out. And, and I think I'm getting a couple steps. Take two steps forward, one step back. Take three, four, one step back. That's still a progression. Mm. <laughs> talk, talk to me about the, the one step back in the industry, though. What, what does that look like? A, a step back in the industry, it, it could be silence. Mm. Simple. You see, you see him, boy? What was wrong? Oh, shit, oh, shit my bad, man. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you, I was like you good, bro? Yeah, yeah. No, nah, but oh, yeah. Shit. What's the question? Uh, The step backs in the oh. industry, how does that look? Step backs in the industry, it, it looks like not being able to, like if you're not putting out music, if you're not being seen, if you're not on blogs, if you're not on TikTok, if you, that's a step back, first step back. Mm. As an artist, you gotta make sure you're always being seen. Whether it's you doing it, your label doing it, if you're independent, you, you got to be seen. Mm. And uh, two steps forward is you putting out a dope-ass song. Mm. One step back is not promoting your song. Three steps forward is having a dope-ass video. It's always ways to get them steps back. Mm. You just got to work. I love that. I ain't going to hold y'all up, man. I know y'all got a lot, so that's a lot to do. Come on, um, part of this, well, not part of it. A lot of it was my fault. I try to give my people at least an hour, but it's, I appreciate your good. time, it's man. It's all good. It's all good. Yo, you gotta, we got to do this again, bro. That's, we Ooh. should do a part two. The, it, it's so dope. Like, this is just conversation. We It's so much we ain't even touch on. Nah, facts. But uh, I always do this to my, my guests, bro. Um, Before you get out of here, can yeah. you follow me back? Or like, am I come not on. lit enough? Come on. Come on. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. See, look. I, I put niggas on blast on camera. I'm going to keep it like? a band. I follow from Ray. <laughs> Don't really mean a lot because if I if you're a nice person, I'm probably gonna follow you. But we gonna do this. You though. say wait, 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 wait. You say you gonna unfollow me? No, I'm gonna follow you. Okay, like, I follow random people in the street. Okay, nah, that that's a lot. So I was like, it's it not, it's not, it's not a big like nigga. Nah. Like, more, I'm a big fan, man. You follow me? Nah, sure. It's, it's a lot. It, it means a lot, dog. It, it means a lot. We talking so down. We talking downstairs. Nigga say, uh, nigga say, how you know that? I hate when my guests do that. Like, what? bro, what you mean? Like, nah, but you, you be work like, I'm but you, to know you'll that. be surprised because a lot of interviewers don't know a lot of shit about you. They don't know you at all. Didn't look shit up. All they know was the main fox, uh, J Cole, uh, my life, and quicksand. And it's like that's all we talking about right now. You ain't even look at nothing else. Now I'm giving you dry. Yeah, it was smooth. Oh shit. Nah, it was gonna be no. Nah, I appreciate it, bro. I'm gonna let y'all get out of here. Um, more Ray, everybody. Uh, J for the people that don't know, I'm. Pretty sure they do know. Let them know how to follow you, all that. You know the vibe, Moray, M O R R A Y D A 1, all platforms. Moray the one, only one of me. Let's get it. Yo, next time you're in the A, pull up for real. Got to. Thank you again. I mean this.
Hey, I heard her. Thank you. Heard her bottom all there. Hey, no, no, for real. He said, "Come through next time." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Talk to props in it. Talk, talk to the props in it. Like, talk yo, to the guy. Yo, yo, the accent yeah, yeah, coming yeah. out. Nah. Yo, next time for real, I mean that. Let's I, do a part. I'm with that. My guy, appreciate it. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'm appreciate back. that for real, man. Yeah, My guy, Love, is bro. the album or did you ever drop an album? Because no. the first one was at mixtape. Mm-hmm. So this is debut. Come on now. My life. Come on, dog. My life. Gang.